Welcome to our orchard. This may be your first time working at an orchard, or you may have many years of experience. Either way, it's clear that each orchard is different. However, our goals are the same everywhere. We all wish to provide a quality product for our customers, whether they are a commercial packing business or simply folks shopping at our market. And by working together, we can do it as safely as possible. The Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, is a regulation issued by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, that your employer must follow to help you be safe while you're working here. You should follow your employer's instructions. This video will tell you what to expect from your employer, and we will talk about easy steps that you should take to keep you protected from pesticides, where they may have been used, and where their residues may be present. And that's why you're watching this program. There is little need for you to be concerned about your health and safety while you're here, as long as you follow the safety steps we'll be discussing. If you have any questions, make sure to ask your supervisor or the trainer who is here today. They're here to help you do your best work and to keep you out of harm's way. Ready? Good. Let's start with a couple definitions. Here at The Orchard, most of you will be considered either workers or handlers. Workers are employees who do hand tasks in crop areas, such as cultivating, pruning, and harvesting. Most often, workers will be exposed to pesticide residues from contact with soil or plants. Exposure can also occur due to drift from nearby applications or even from water with pesticides in it that's used to irrigate crops. Workers and handlers might also be exposed to pesticide residues that can be found on tractors and other machinery, including chemigation equipment. These residues might not be visible, so just because you can't see them does not mean that they are not there. Handlers are employees who are responsible for mixing and loading pesticides, applying pesticides to crops, or cleaning and repairing pesticide application equipment. Handlers are more likely to be exposed to pesticides directly as they mix and apply the products and must use extra caution in their tasks to limit that exposure. Employers are not permitted to use workers to mix, load, or apply pesticides or even assist in applications unless they are trained as handlers. The first part of our program applies to both workers and handlers, while the second part is strictly for handlers. While you are watching this program, feel free to ask any questions you may have about this information. Afterward, you will be required to sign a form that says you took this training. Again, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have about this information. It's for your own safety. If you wish to have a copy of the form once it's signed, your employer must provide one to you free of charge when you ask for it. The WPS training here at The Orchard is required each year and will most likely be the first thing you do as an employee, no matter how long you've been employed here. Even when using DVDs like this one, your trainer is required to be here to answer any of your concerns or questions. Trainers need to be qualified and the information has to be presented in a way that you can understand it. A couple more definitions you'll need to understand are pesticides and exposure. Pesticides are chemical materials, either synthetic or organic, used to control or eliminate various pests. Pests can be insects, weeds, mold, fungus, or rodents, anything that can damage our plants or crops. Pesticides, when used correctly, are effective tools in the battle to grow and produce quality crops. Because exposure to pesticides can make you sick, you should understand how they can enter your body and how you can reduce your exposure to them. It's important to follow the safety steps we will talk about today when it comes to the possibility of pesticide exposure. So how can we be exposed to a pesticide? How does it enter our body to make us sick? Exposure can happen from contacting a plant that has been treated. Most often, it occurs through contact with your skin or from touching your eye. You can be exposed by breathing in particles of dust or from drift. 
On rare occasions, people have consumed pesticides by eating or drinking them. Most exposures can be prevented by washing your hands thoroughly whenever possible, especially when you have been working with plants that have been treated. You should use the water, soap, and towels that your employer has to provide near your work area to wash when you leave the treated area. This is most important before you eat, drink, smoke, or put anything in or near your mouth or eyes. It's important, too, to wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. Pesticides from your hands can get on your sensitive skin and can be easily absorbed. Something else to be alert for are your employer's instructions for areas to stay away from. When pesticide applications are taking place, your employer must not direct you to enter the area being treated or to be near the application equipment. The only persons allowed in an area during an application are appropriately trained and equipped handlers involved in the application. For applications that have already taken place, your employer is required to notify you of those applications by posting signs like this one or by telling you about the application. When you see this sign, do not go into this area until it comes down. It is not safe. The sign should look like this. It has a grim man with his hand up on a red background and a black circle around it. There might be a time when you are working in the crop area when a pesticide application is going on nearby. Even if you are outside the area being treated and the application exclusion zone, pesticide drift might move over the area that you are working in and you need to leave that area immediately so the pesticide cannot contact you. Even if you know that they are low toxicity pesticides, you do not want to allow contamination. Over time, even low toxicity pesticides can harm you. Sometimes you can develop sensitivity to pesticides even with low level exposures. Each pesticide carries potential hazards from exposure for workers, handlers, and their families, especially to children and pregnant women. These hazards can include acute effects or effects that happen quickly during or after exposure. Some examples are dizziness and rashes delayed effects, symptoms that may take some time to develop long after an exposure. Chronic effects, effects that happen as a result of small exposures over a long time period, perhaps as long as 10 or 20 years, including cancers and birth defects. And sensitization effects, these are symptoms, often a rash or breathing problems, that show up once your body has reached a certain level of exposure. This central location is where you can find information about how to do your work safely around pesticides. It must be at a location that you can access during regular hours. The pesticide application records will include the EPA registration number, active ingredients, the location and description of the application area, the day and time of its application, and the length of the REI, or restricted entry interval. This REI is the amount of time that must pass before it is safe to re-enter an area after it's been treated with pesticides. In addition to pesticide application records, you should also have access to the safety data sheets or the SDS at the central location. The SDS have information about the hazards of pesticides used where you work. You'll also find pesticide safety information probably on a poster similar to this. Besides the reminders about ways to reduce your exposure, there will be contact numbers and addresses for an area hospital or medical center, along with the contact information for the state lead agency, which in Pennsylvania will be your regional Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. You can use the phone number for the state lead agency to report pesticide or WPS violations. Your employer must inform you where to find this information at the central location. You should make sure you learn its location right away. We talked earlier about washing your hands and the important role it plays in protecting you from pesticides. But what happens if you find yourself too far away from the main wash house, decontamination site, or a bathroom, and you come into contact with pesticides? Under the WPS, 
workers must have access to at least one gallon of water for washing, soap, and single-use towels within a quarter mile of the crop area they may be working in, when it has been less than 30 days since the last restricted entry interval expired in that crop area. Do not use irrigation water to wash with as it might have pesticides in it, and definitely don't drink irrigation water. For handlers, the owner is required to provide at least three gallons of clean water, soap, and single-use towels at the mix and load site, as well as the area where they remove personal protective equipment and within a quarter mile of any application area. When you are done with work at the end of the day, wash thoroughly before going home. This is especially important for handlers. If possible, handlers should shower and change into clean clothing before going home. No matter what job you perform at the orchard, if it must wait until you get home, make sure to shower and change into clean clothes as soon as you can. You should also avoid contact with your spouse or children until after you've showered and changed. Remember to take your work shoes or boots off before entering your home. There are additional ways that you can keep your family safe from being exposed to hazardous pesticides. Never take used pesticide containers home from work. No matter how well you feel they've been rinsed or how clean they appear, these containers are not safe to be used for any purpose. Even the smallest amounts of pesticide can make you or your family members very sick if you were to drink from one of these jugs. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is another way to protect yourself from pesticides. If you handle pesticides, it is necessary for you to wear PPE as described on the product label. PPE may include coveralls, special gloves, chemical resistant boots, eye protection, and even dust or respirator masks to protect handlers when they are handling pesticides. Most workers will never need PPE unless they are part of an early entry group that is directed to work on a specific task in a treated area where the REI is still in effect. These workers must receive additional information and protections from their employer, which may include PPE. Early entry is only permitted for a few specific exceptions under the WPS. These workers must be provided with PPE if required by the label for the duration of time to complete their assigned task. Do not take PPE home with you. Your employer must provide, maintain, and clean PPE. Dispose of damaged or heavily contaminated PPE. Like the pesticide containers, PPE may carry residues and should never be used in a home situation. If exposed, these residues can be particularly harmful to children because of their smaller body mass, as well as to pregnant women. Clothes that have pesticide residues on them can transfer those residues to your skin. Work clothes that you wear to protect yourself from skin exposure should include long pants, long sleeves, and shoes with socks. These should be clean when you arrive for work each day. It is smart to keep your work clothes separate from the rest of your family laundry. Whoever handles the family laundry can wear gloves to help protect themselves from residues on clothing or should wash up after handling the laundry. Your work clothes should be washed in the hottest water possible. Then it is best to dry those work clothes by hanging them outside to dry in the sun. Early entry workers must first be shown what PPE they need and how to put it on and off. Their employer must also tell them under what exception to the REI that they are going in under, what their duties will be, and what limitations they are under. All early entry workers must be at least 18 years of age. We'll discuss more about handlers' responsibilities and PPE in the next part of our training. Occasionally, and in spite of everyone's best efforts, accidental exposures to pesticides can still occur. If you believe you have been exposed, but you don't have any symptoms, wash off as soon as possible. If your clothing has been exposed, take it off immediately and wash yourself thoroughly. Again, shower if possible. Be careful when removing your clothes to prevent getting pesticides in your eyes, face, or mouth. In case of an extreme situation, and when there is no other option, a nearby stream or pond may be used for an emergency decontamination. 
Make sure you wash thoroughly as soon as you can, wash your hair too, and put on clean clothes. If you get pesticides in your eyes, be sure to rinse them with clean water as quickly as possible to minimize possible long-term damage. If only one eye has been exposed, make sure to rinse that eye without contaminating the other eye. Rinse the affected eye for at least 15 minutes and then seek immediate medical care. If you have been exposed to a pesticide, you may have a headache or feel nauseated, feel dizzy, lightheaded, have a rash or sweat more than usual. If you start to feel ill, the first thing you should do is notify your supervisor to ask for emergency assistance. Your employer must provide transportation for you to a medical facility and will be required to provide the EPA information about pesticides you may have been exposed to. Your employer must provide the SDS and the application and exposure information to the treating medical personnel. The SDS sheet at the central location will give first aid instructions. If you think you may be experiencing heat stress, try taking a few minutes in a safe, cool, or shaded area and get something cold to drink, preferably water. Loosen your clothing and or your PPE and get as much fresh air as possible. Try to have someone stay with you until you feel better. It's possible that you could find a coworker who's not feeling well or may even be unconscious because of a pesticide exposure. That person should be taken to a medical facility as soon as possible. Again, your best response is to get help from your employer immediately and to get the injured person to medical care. Be careful not to contaminate yourself. It is important that a person with proper training take care of the sick person. We can't emphasize enough that being alert and paying attention to assignments and the provided pesticide application information is the smartest way to stay safe and healthy on the job. If you need the pesticide application information or the safety data sheet, but you are not able to obtain it, ask for it from your employer. You may also designate a representative to ask for that for you. To do that, you must put in writing your name, your signature, the date of the designation, dates that you need the records from, and the name of your designated representative and their contact information, plus a statement that designates that person as your representative. The document must include a description of the specific information being requested to include the dates of the requested records and the type of work you were doing then. That designated representative must then give that to your employer. Well, that's about it for now. Let's take a quick look at the basic points we cover today. The WPS, or Worker Protection Standard, is a regulation developed by the Environmental Protection Agency that helps to keep you safe and healthy at work by requiring your employer to provide information and supplies related to minimizing your exposure to pesticides. You will be trained every year to be taught or reminded about the safety elements provided, as well as your responsibility to understand and apply the information you've been taught. Your employer will provide a central location at work where you can read and learn all about the pesticides in use, where and when they've been applied, information about their active ingredients, as well as contact and address information for the closest medical center or hospital in case of an exposure. In addition to the safety data sheets, pesticide labels can provide information related to their safe handling, as well as signal words and basic first aid information. Protect yourself and your family by paying attention to signs and areas of potential exposure. Keep children and non-working family away from pesticide-treated areas. Don't use pesticide containers for anything other than storing pesticides properly. Keep your work clothes separate from regular family laundry. Wash thoroughly at the end of the day or shower and change into clean clothes either at a wash station or at home before coming into contact with your spouse or other family members. If you think you've been exposed to pesticides or see someone else who has, get help from your supervisor immediately. They will be able to determine the best way to treat the situation. Don't try to help someone who may be unconscious. Let those who are trained and wearing the proper PPE handle the situation. 
Most employers are fair and concerned for your safety, but just in case, your employer cannot retaliate against you for wanting to follow the WPS or for reporting pesticide violations. Once more, there's little reason to be afraid at work, but there is a great value in being alert and understanding how your own actions can keep you safe and healthy at work today and every day. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about the information we just shared, now is the time to ask your employer or the trainer. Get the answers you need in order to do your job safely and to the best of your ability. Have a great day. If you've been asked to view this pesticide safety training video, it means you've been chosen as a pesticide handler at the orchard. While you are watching this program, feel free to ask any questions you may have about this information. Even when using DVDs like this one, your trainer is required to be here to answer any of your concerns or questions. There are specific responsibilities and challenges in being a handler, but first things first, you need to be at least 18 years old, unless you are a member of the grower's immediate family. And if you haven't already watched the pesticide safety video designed for both workers and handlers, you need to do that before watching this video. As a reminder, handlers are employees that mix and load pesticides, apply pesticides, and even clean and repair pesticide application equipment. If you've seen that video, then you've already been taught how you can be exposed to pesticides at work and how they can enter your body. You know how to reduce your exposure by wearing work clothing to protect you from residues and using decontamination supplies that must be provided for you. You've also been shown the information displayed at the central location, the application information, the safety data sheets that provide hazard information about the applied pesticides and the safety poster there. You've been taught steps for routine decontamination and how to decontaminate in an emergency. The word handler indicates the responsibility you have with pesticide products. It's critical to understand the particular products you're working with and the correct ways to use, transport, store, and dispose of them. Proper training, preparation, and understanding and following label directions are valuable in making every day a safer one. Because handlers are exposed to pesticides directly, they must be better prepared and properly protected in order to reduce the possibility of breathing in pesticides or coming into direct contact with undiluted materials. That's why it's critical for handlers to read and understand the information on the labeling of every pesticide that they work with. Some of the important information you'll find there includes the product name, ingredients, and the type of pesticide it is. Knowing what you're working with and its proper usage are the first step in any application process. You'll also find signal words and symbols on the label to help you understand how dangerous improper usage or accidental exposure can be. Caution indicates the least toxic pesticide, but it can still be an irritant or make you sick if you come in contact with it. 
warning is used for pesticides that can cause moderate irritation or damage to skin, eyes, or any other part of the body exposed to it. The word danger indicates a highly toxic pesticide product that can cause irreversible damage and even death when exposure occurs. It is often accompanied by the word poison on the label to indicate its elevated threat to your health. Another section of information relates the product's directions for use. This will give you instructions on how to properly apply the materials. Closely following these instructions according to the label is critical in keeping yourself and others safe. You'll also find contact information for the manufacturer on the label. This will be helpful if you have additional questions about the product that may not be clear to you simply by reading the label or the safety data sheet. The pesticide label will also show the EPA registration number. This number can be critical in case of accidental exposure. In addition, the product label includes first aid and may have spill cleanup instructions. Your employer is required to make the label available to you while you are handling pesticides and to make sure you have read or understand the label information regarding safe use. Having a clear understanding of the products you're working with and their proper handling will go a long way toward keeping everyone at the orchard safer. In addition to access to label information and understanding how to safely use the product, another way to minimize exposure is by wearing PPE, or Personal Protective Equipment. You must wear the PPE that are listed on the label for the specific handling task you perform. This can include gloves, boot covers, full coveralls, aprons, eye protection, or even a full respirator mask. Your employer must provide you with the label required PPE. It must be clean and it must fit properly and be in working condition. Your employer must ensure PPE is worn, maintained, and stored correctly, and must provide a clean place for you to keep your street clothes and a clean area for removing PPE. If a pesticide label requires coveralls, this means that cloth or fabric coveralls are acceptable, and chemical resistant suits, such as Tyvek, are not necessary. If a handler chooses to wear a chemical resistant suit, he will not be required to wear the layer of clothing specified on the label, such as long sleeve shirts and long pants under that chemical resistant suit. Keep in mind, PPE alone cannot prevent all opportunities for pesticide exposure. Proper hygiene, such as washing thoroughly with soap and shampoo after pesticide application or potential exposure is an important part of minimizing negative health effects. After your work activity, proper removal of used PPE is critical in minimizing contact with residues. Remove PPE as soon as you complete the job that required it. First, wash your disposable or reusable gloves with soap and water. Then remove other PPE while still wearing the gloves. Then wash the gloves again with soap and water before removing them. Clean reusable PPE according to instructions provided by the PPE manufacturer or your employer without contaminating yourself. Wash regular work clothes that have been exposed to pesticides properly. Wash them separately from other laundry with detergent and hot water. Dry outside in the sun to help destroy any remaining pesticide. If the pesticide you are to use requires a respirator for the task, your employer must provide you with a medical evaluation to make sure you can safely wear the respirator, a fit test to make sure the respirator protects you, and training before you wear the respirator. The first step is a medical evaluation performed by a licensed medical professional. This doesn't necessarily mean a medical physical, but does involve a series of specific questions aimed at determining a handler's health and safety while working with a respirator on. If your answers indicate you have any of the medical conditions, a medical exam may be necessary, but will not necessarily exclude you from respirator use. This evaluation may need to be repeated. The second step is the fit test itself, which your employer must provide for you. This can be conducted by any person who uses the OSHA procedures to ensure that the respirator fits your face shape so it provides the necessary protection when you wear it. 
Fit Test services are often easily available from area providers, and easy to use kits are available from several safety catalog or online services. You must use the same make, model, style, and size of respirator while applying the pesticide that you wore for the fit test. If your work requires a number of different types of respirator masks, then you must be fit tested for each one. Men with beards cannot safely wear a standard respirator mask because it won't seal properly. Instead, if a respirator is required by a label, they can comply by wearing a unit that covers their entire head, like this helmet style unit. Handlers using equipment like this, such as a loose fitting powered air purifying respirator, won't be required to have a fit test. However, the medical evaluation and respirator training will still be necessary. If your employer cannot provide you with a mask that fits and protects completely, you cannot work with products requiring a respirator until you have one, because wearing the respirator is a label requirement. In addition to a proper respirator, regular visual or audio contact may be required with certain pesticides. For example, handlers applying pesticide products with the skull and crossbones on the label must be checked every two hours by sight or sound. Constant voice or visual contact must be maintained with handlers applying fumigants in enclosed space production areas. Working with the employer closely and coordinating proper pesticide applications based on label requirements and directions will produce the best results. Just as important is the employer's responsibility to notify workers of pesticide applications and areas that are under an REI, either verbally or by posting warning signs. All pesticide applications are to be documented with proper paperwork that is to be kept up to date in the central location. Your employer may direct you to perform these notifications. If so, always remember to properly post do not enter signs like this one. They are required for outside applications of pesticide materials with an REI, restricted entry interval, greater than 48 hours, and for enclosed space applications with an REI greater than four hours. The label may require workers to be notified by posting signs and receiving oral notifications. In other situations, your employer can notify workers verbally. Again, following your employer's instructions and knowing when these signs need to be posted, for how long, and in which areas are critical in keeping your coworkers informed. The pesticide labels have all the necessary details on proper application and how long the REI lasts. We can't emphasize enough the importance of following pesticide label instructions. This is a critical part of keeping yourself and your coworkers safe, and the label is the law. Your employer is also required to notify workers who are at the orchard in advance of any application so that they can be aware of any potentially unsafe areas. Your employer is responsible for posting of the application records, but they may direct you to record the application information and post it at the central location. Whether you are directed to do the record keeping or not, this information is critical to the safety of everyone at the orchard. During application, wind or other conditions may cause pesticides to land somewhere other than their intended target. This is called drift. As a handler making an application, you must make sure that each pesticide is applied so that it does not contact anyone who is not properly trained and wearing the appropriate protective equipment. Your employer will work with you to make sure you know how to safely and correctly use any equipment to minimize the possibility of drift. Workers must never be permitted to be in areas where drift may occur, and applicators must be aware of any potential exposure to workers and should suspend any application where people may be contacted. The only persons allowed in an area during an application are appropriately trained and equipped handlers involved in the application. The handler should also understand the Application Exclusion Zone, or AEZ, which is the immediate area around the application equipment, which moves as the equipment moves around the treated area. The AEZ should be free of people this means any person except a trained and properly equipped handler. As a handler, you must suspend an application if people are in the AEZ. 
The size of the AEZ depends on the type and the height of the application. Application types such as air blast and aerial require an AEZ of 100 feet. Applications with lower drift potential, such as boom sprayers, require an application exclusion zone of 25 feet. Though the potential for drift is often a concern with applications involving mechanical sprayers, it can also happen where pesticides are applied using irrigation systems, a process we call chemigation. In addition to drift, handlers need to be aware of the potential for pesticide runoff or other environmental and wildlife hazards. The product label provides specific information under the heading environmental hazards. Improper applications or a spill during mixing and loading can create long-term damage to water, soil, and vegetation. The pesticide label will provide information about hazards to non-target insects, aquatic organisms, birds, and other wildlife. As a handler, you must be careful to follow the label to avoid damage to the environment and wildlife. Again, the most important thing you can do now is to know as much as possible about the pesticides that are used in the areas where you work. Your employer is required to provide information about each application and must explain the label to you if you cannot read it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You can even ask a coworker to help you get the answers to your questions. As mentioned in the previous program, pesticide exposure carries potential hazards for handlers and their families. These hazards can include acute effects or effects that show up during or quickly after exposure, delayed effects, symptoms that may take some time to develop long after an exposure, chronic effects, are effects that happen as a result of repeated, small exposures over a long time period, perhaps as long as 10 or 20 years. And sensitization effects are symptoms that show up once your body has reached a certain level of exposure. If you believe you may have been exposed, you need to remove pesticide contaminated clothing and wash off immediately. Find the nearest decontamination supplies and wash off the pesticide. Your employer must provide the following decontamination supplies. Clean water, soap, and single-use towels at the mix and load site, as well as the area where you remove personal protective equipment and near where you are making an application. In an emergency exposure situation, if there is a pond or stream closer than the decontamination supplies, you should wash in those natural waters. If the label for the pesticide being used requires eye protection, the mix and load site must also have an eye wash system. Whether it's a commercial system purchased specifically or simply a clean, available water source from a garden hose, the eye wash system must have the ability to provide a gentle stream of water in case a pesticide gets in the eye. If that happens, flush the affected eye for at least 15 minutes and then get medical attention as soon as possible. These water supplies should be kept out of direct sunlight to avoid additional injury. As a handler, your employer must provide you a change of clothes such as coveralls or a chemical resistant suit in case your work clothes become contaminated with pesticides. Another task that handlers may be directed to do is the transporting of pesticides from one location to another. There are some basic recommendations to keep safe while doing so. First. Never transport pesticide materials in a passenger compartment or anywhere that people, pets, or livestock may be transported. Do not carry pesticides in the same compartment as food, animal feed, or clothing. Use the trunk of a car or the bed of a pickup truck and make sure the containers are secure and won't roll around, fall over, or out onto the ground. Make sure the pesticide containers are in an upright position and that there are no cracks, leaks, or loose-fitting caps. Do everything possible to prevent any pesticides from escaping the container. If there are concerns about a container, talk to your supervisor before traveling. Upon arrival at your destination, again, make sure that the pesticides are stored safely and that the containers have not sustained any damage to cause leaking. Pesticides should be kept in a locked storage facility with access only available to those trained and prepared to handle them. It's a good idea to carry spill cleanup materials and PPE with you when transporting chemicals, 
and coordinate with your employer any cleanup steps or procedures related to each transport. Different chemicals will require specific spill cleanup steps and solutions. Read the product safety data sheet or SDS before transporting in order to be clear on specific cleanup details. If you do have a spill, think safety first. If you're not sure what to do, call for help and wait there until help arrives. Do not leave the spill area unattended. If you are going to clean up the spill and you are properly equipped, remember the three C's, control, contain, and clean up. Control, control the source of the spill. Put the container upright, shut off the equipment, or if possible, put the leaky container inside another container. Contain, stop the pesticide from spreading by using dirt or other absorbent materials to create a dike around the spill. Put up warning signs or caution tape to keep others out of the area. Clean up, do not use water. Often this will dilute the product and actually spread the pesticide, making the spill worse. Soak up liquid spills with special sponges, soil, sawdust, clay cat litter, or other absorbent materials. Sweep the spill and clean up material into plastic containers or special drums. The label or the SDS may have disposal instructions for the spilled material. State or federal requirements may require spills to be reported. Your supervisor should be able to provide more specific information. After cleaning up a spill, you should wash thoroughly at the end of your shift. If possible, take a full shower with soap and shampoo at work, then change into clean clothes before you go home. If not, shower promptly when you get home and put on clean clothes. We talked in the previous program about the dangers of heat stress. Because handlers like you will be most often wearing PPE, sometimes in warm weather or in closed spaces like sprayer cabs, heat stress is possible. It's worth repeating that if you think you may be experiencing heat stress, try taking a few minutes in a safe, cool, or shaded area and get something cold to drink, preferably water. Loosen your clothing or PPE and get as much air to cool yourself as possible. Try to have someone stay with you until you feel better. Your employer is responsible for managing heat stress if you must wear PPE to protect yourself from pesticides. Remember, more detailed information about pesticides and other materials you work with can be found on the safety data sheets or SDS. Recent changes to requirements on how SDSs are written should make them easier to understand necessary hazard and emergency medical information about the pesticides in use. Your employer must display the safety data sheets for all pesticides that you may come into contact with. Your employer will tell you where the central location is on the orchard, where the SDS, application records, and safety information display with emergency contact information are found. Remember, there's no reason to be afraid at work. By selecting you as a handler, your employer places a serious responsibility in your hands. Always be careful when working around pesticides. Pay attention. Understand that there are risks to your health and the health of others, including your family. To protect yourself and others, follow the label, your employer's directions, and the steps we've talked about today to reduce exposure. You'll find that most employers are fair to their workers. Under the WPS, your employer cannot intimidate, threaten, or direct you to perform unsafe tasks in the orchard or discriminate against and harass you if you refuse or if you attempt to comply with the WPS. If you believe that there are violations of the WPS taking place at the orchard, you can contact your state or tribal agency for pesticide enforcement listed on the pesticide safety information display at the central location. If you want a copy of the pesticide application information and safety data sheets, you can ask for them yourself or designate in writing a representative to get that information for you. Talk to the trainer for how to designate the representative. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about the information we just shared, now is the time to ask the trainer. Get the answers you need in order to do your job to the best of your ability. Have a great day.